All right. Well, thank you. I, I just, I really enjoyed reading your book. It's what I, too, what I really liked about it is that I, it's an easy read. Like it's, it's an, it flows so nicely. It's an easy read. And I just, I really, really enjoyed it. I found it to be a real page turner. And, uh, you know, I just, I wanted to say that I really admire your courage to share your story because not everyone, um, can do that, right? Like not everyone is willing to have that vulnerability uh, to really take off the masks and lay it out there. And this is how it was. So thank you. I think this will really bring a lot of healing for a lot of people. And uh, so, yeah, so I did have some questions, but before we begin, before I give you my questions, I just was like, like, uh, how are you feeling after now that you put your story on paper for the world to read? Um, me personally, I, the power I feel inside of myself is beyond overwhelming. Like, yes, it did take me a lot of strength to do what I did, but at the same time, um, I, I just, I know, I so know 100% that this is my path. It is to help people heal. And when I wrote the book, at the very, whoopsies, sorry. At the very beginning, um, yeah, it was for me to heal. But as I started to write the book and I got more into it and, um, you know, my feelings and emotions were brought more to the surface, I could actually see that the situations and experiences that I went through, it was just so much more than that. You know, like how many of us out there, um, you know, put on that chameleon suit just so others would like us, right? So many of us do that. How many of us have a family member that we do not get along with, right? And we stay quiet just so that there is peace within the family. But yet at the same time, we do not say anything. And, you know, um, and then we just keep quiet. And then, you know, the feelings just get buried deep inside of us, which is not good either. You know, um, how many of us have lost a child, you know, and uh, it just, it, it just pains us. And so bringing those specific things to the forefront, that's how we heal. You know, you have to talk about these situations um, in order to heal because privacy, it is, it is the worst, absolutely worst thing that you can do. Yeah, you know, what you said there about how um, uh, not getting along with a family member, but not saying it just to keep the peace, but really, it's not peaceful, is it? <laughs> like, oh, right? No, it, like, it is, it is how so many? far from peaceful. It, it, is, it is one of the worst things, um, you know, that, that you can do. Um, because talking is freedom, by far, you know? Um, and, and that's something that, you know, people really, really need to understand in order to heal. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And like, it was very clear in your story, how like, to me, like as an, as an outsider looking in and reading your story in, in some respects, it was a journey of you seeking love. It was a journey yeah. about seeking love and then kind of seeking it in all the wrong places and in the wrong ways. And, and then how, because of that journey of seeking a, in, in an unhealthy way led to this continuation of being in circumstances that created more hurt and more angst. And then that, that press, and then you suppress and suppress and suppress until <laughs> yeah. So it's, you know, it becomes an unraveling and there's no more, you cannot suppress anymore. It's like this explosion. Yeah. And, um, I feel like, you know, and I feel like every one of us at some point has looked for love and recognition and encouragement in the wrong ways. Every single one of us, mm -hmm. I don't think any one of us is immune to that. And, um, I felt like that, that was really clear in your story and how really now how freeing it was for you like letting go of that has now yes, yes. um and and that's the thing too you know like once i was done re writing my book and then i i like reread my book and i was looking at it and it was like wow like 
it was a real eye opener and a shocker to me because then I could see everything, how it was laid out. Of course, when I was, you know, experiencing all of those things, I didn't see any of it. You know, of course I didn't see any of it. Otherwise I wouldn't have continued going in the wrong direction or, you know, putting myself in horrible situations or, you, you know, letting people walk all over me or whatever the situation was, was right. But then I could actually see, wow, these learning lessons. And, and that was the biggest point with, with all of my experiences was what did I learn from it? Yeah, a lot of those lessons, those experiences, it took me a long time to get those lessons. And as you can see in my book, they were repeated over and over and over until I actually got it, right? So when people read that book, they're going to see it and they're going to be like, wow. And, and I know, uh, you know, some people have said to me that they just, you know, in other interviews that I've had, you know, the, um, the interviewer has said to me, I just wanted to shake you and just help you and, and whatever, right? But I know too that I needed to go through these lessons because I needed to learn that or else it would be repeated again. And now that I'm at the point in my life where I have definitely learned all those lessons, you know, and none of them are going to be repeated. But that's where I can bring all my experiences to the forefront. And that's where I am where I am today so that I can help others, right? Because I can see things so clear now. Just it's unbelievable how clear I can see things. Yeah, you look back and say, how did I not see it then, right? <laughs> right, <laughs> right. But, but the biggest thing was I was trying to be somebody I was not. I was trying to please others. You know, I was so afraid of, you know, losing people in my life. You know, there were so many different barriers that were stopping me because of fear. And, um, but now I, I'm not fearful at all anymore. That's because I know who I am. I trust who I am. I love who I am, you know, and there, there are certain things that will never happen in my life again, you know, but that's because I totally and completely respect who I am. And there's a lot of people that need to get to that point like I am, right? And it's like, no, like I come first, you know, in every situation, because if I don't come first, I'm just going to put myself back to where I was before. Right. So I, my question, I would just like to hear in your own words, what was it inside of you that went, I need to write a book? <laughs> or did it even start out that day? Did it just start out as journaling? How did it go? Like, how did that process develop? No, well... <sighs> So I was doing these videos on, on Facebook when the pandemic first started. And it was like, I'm, I'm seeing all these people, you know, that are, um, th that are posting things. Um, the one that really triggered me and still angers me to this day is um, th there's uh, people on Facebook because we were homeschooling our children at the time. And they've got their kids at the table homeschooling them. And there's this one particular one where the mother is laughing and she's videoing it and it's live coverage of her daughter pouring a glass of wine for her. And it's not even noon. And um, I was absolutely shocked and appalled that that was happening. And, and, and she's, you know, is it too early to drink? And I was just like, this is absolutely crazy and then I and then you know just with social media and everybody else everybody's talking about drinking and you know and then the increase of alcohol sales then you're starting to hear about the suicide and there was just everything negative and it was just going on and on and on and so that was when I started to do these videos and it was from there that with each video that I did I started to get stronger and stronger and stronger and I started to reveal more stuff about myself but then it did get to a point where I was like you know what like I am encouraging people out there but I'm living a lie myself because they don't really know who the true you know Shannon is so that was when I decided that I was going to do a, a live video and I that was when I pretty much opened up the can of worms about um, the abuse and alcoholism and, and different things like that that were happening in my past and and what and then I revealed that I you know was in recovery uh, because I was so good at lying about stuff like that too um, and so it was from there that it was like okay I'm going to write a book and I thought that was 
what I needed to do um, to become very freeing to help me heal, to get to my next level. But like I said, as I started writing my book, I just knew there was just so much more there. It wasn't just about me anymore. It was definitely my journey was to start helping people for sure. For sure. Yeah. And you do see that, that um, the alcohol memes on social media, you know, and people laugh at it, but it's really not. No, it's a laughing not. Matter. It, it, it's, it's not a laughing matter because our culture has definitely made um, uh, drinking very much a part of our, our culture. Um, and, and it does it, it. It really does absolutely shock me and really appall me um, because it doesn't matter where you go now. There's like sip and shock. Um, you know, where they encourage the drinking or, you know, there's a lot of the hair salons now and barbershops that encourage you to come in and get a haircut. And if you do, then you get, you know, an alcoholic beverage. Um, you know, there's the paint nights and they give you a complimentary drink. Like there's absolutely nowhere that you go now that there is an alcohol which is pushed upon you. And what bothers me the most is we're bringing our children up in this society to think that it's normal right? And it should not be normalized. How many family functions have you been to, or even I, that it's, it's all about the alcohol, you know? And, and that's one thing that people need to realize that it's you yourself. What you bring to the table is what brings fun. It's not that alcohol. And I see it everywhere. People cannot be themselves unless they have that alcohol in their hand. And that, that is where people really need to wake up. You know, and I want my children to realize that they can go to a party or they can go to go to an outing and they don't need to have that liquid, liquid courage. Mm -hmm. You know, people need to start um, bringing their feelings to the forefront instead of hiding them, you know, and that's what alcohol does. It hides them. It numbs. And that is not how we want society to go at all. Yeah. Look at the commercials on TV. Right. You know, you see all these beautiful women you know, in the bar and, and they're drinking, you know, a, a cocktail or whatever. And then there's the guy in the corner staring at her. But, but what, what happens after they've had like six, seven, eight drinks? You're not seeing the girl in the bathroom, you know, bawling her eyes out, totally inebriated. You're not seeing the domestic abuse that's happening at home. You know, you're, you're not seeing any of that. You're just seeing the glamorous part of the alcohol. And that's so not the way that it is. It's not the way that it is. And I just want people to wake up and be aware of this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you. So well said. Now, uh, reading your book, I, um, I, 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 I jotted down some quotes that I just really love that you had. And, 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 and you're living up to this quote right now as we're speaking, but I really love this quote. If I didn't make myself vulnerable, how could I expect to gain anyone's trust? I just oh, totally. love that quote. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And mm -hmm. uh, that it really is. That is your book. You're you, you have a quote there. <laughs> it is vulnerable. And, and, you, and in your interviews, I've watched uh, numerous of your interviews and it's all vulnerability, but there is strength and vulnerability, but oh, absolutely. we're not. And that's, that's what so many people don't understand. They, they think that they have to have this big aura about them and, 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 you know, and it's just like, no, like people want to see the real individual. They, they want to see the feelings within people because not a lot of people show feelings anymore. And that's where I find my strength. And that's where I look at others when they show their vulnerability. I know that they are grounded and, and, and what, what they're saying is really coming from their heart. Those people that, you know, are all big and whatever, I look at that and you know what? That to me is a huge cover up. Those are the most insecure people that I've ever met because they are too afraid to show their feelings. So they are trying to be somebody that they are actually not at all, mm -hmm. right? And I know many people like that, you know? And it's really sad. It's really sad that people can't feel comfortable in their skin to just be who they really are. And that also is a sign too that they don't like themselves either. Yeah, well, and that was kind of your journey of your life. Is, and I guess I should just summarize your book journey um, for, for, so the audience knows is that you grew up in an abuse. Your father was abusive. Yeah. Extremely abusive. 
abusive. He yes. um, committed suicide when you were just three years old. Yes. And then your, your brother, who was about 20 years old at that time, I believe he was 20. Mm-hmm. And then mm-hmm. he became the abuser. Yes. And then, <laughs> and then you found yourself in, um, as you grew up in unhealthy relationships and how that cycle just kept continuing and how uh, continuing, and then ultimately how you use alcohol to numb those feet, that pain and that feeling, and then how you were kind of trapped in this cycle of people pleasing and putting on this mask, this facade that, right. Right. So it's just kind of a summary. So people know. I don't know if so, you want to add anything to that. So you, you, because, because the abuse and alcohol was normalized within my family because that was what I was brought up in. So that was normalized to me. So of course I am who I attract, right? So of course, as I get older, I'm used to that environment. So what am I going to do? I'm going to attract that. So I, 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 I attracted, you know, the abuse of relationships and, and the alcohol. But it wasn't until I actually realized that this is wrong, you know, that things started to change within me. But I, you know, and it's, it's no different than somebody that has grown up in a very loving family, right? When you're brought up in a very loving family, you've got a lot of self-confidence. You know, things are going great for you, you know, in different areas and you just carry yourself totally different. Um, where with me being brought up in an abusive home with alcoholism, that was where um, my, I had no self-confidence. I felt ugly. I felt dirty. You know, I I was abused. So that's, that was what my normal was. I didn't know any different, you know, Um, like other side of the coin, somebody who was loved in that, they don't understand um, abuse or they don't understand addiction because they can't comprehend it. They've never been exposed to it. Right, right, where me, back to the other side of the coin, I, I didn't know what love was. I didn't know what compassion was. I didn't, um, you know, I, I didn't know, um, you know, how to uh, figure out, ha- have the confidence to figure out things on my own. You know, I just, I just kept everything bottled up inside, right? So I learned, I learned to fake it, right? you know, so it's, that's, that's where that comes in. And it wasn't until later on in life when I was exposed to, you know, good families and, you know, really good friends. And, you know, that came from really good families and that, that I could actually start to see, oh, wow, you know, like they love each other, like they hug each other, like, you know, they're good to each other, you know, they're, and, and it was so slowly and surely I was exposed to different scenarios So then that was when things started to wake up for me, you know, and I could see the other side of the coin. Mm, Yeah. Um, uh... And like you go through it all, like one another quote is um, you needed to heal the entire package, mind, body and soul. Like it wasn't just a matter of, oh, I'm not going to drink anymore. There was... (laughs) like that was part of the process, but it's more than just not drinking. Well, you have to, yeah. because when, because when you're in the process of healing, you have to make that decision and you just can't, you just can't heal one area because if you do, the other two are going to lack. So you, it, it's got to be a whole, it's got to be a whole package, you know, and, and that's also, that's also self image mm. that, you know, that's, that's where it all comes in. Um, and, and like, for example, how many times have you seen somebody uh, trying to go on a diet? They're trying to lose weight, right? Well, you, if you don't succeed, it's because you haven't changed every aspect of your life. You will lose weight for a certain amount of time, but it will always come back because you do not keep that self image of what you want to be in your mind, right? right? You know, so you have to live it, talk it, act it. And that's me. I live it, talk it, act it, you know, and, and I, I, that's who I am now. I have trained myself to become this person that I am now because those days of what happened before they're done. I'm not that same person anymore. I can't even, I can't even relate to what it was 
like for me anymore, like even a year ago, because I have grown so much in so many different areas of my life. And I've made that decision that I am going forward, that I'm going to help people, you know, and, and so that's where my focus is. It's all in decision and self image and mind, body, spirit, for sure. There's no question. Right. Um, just wanted to see. Look, uh, now, what is your, like, if you were talking to someone right now and you just wanted to give them some hope that currently right now they are trapped in the cycle of addiction and uh, do you have any words of encouragement to say to them at this time? Oh, jeepers. There are so many things I could say to them. Um, but the biggest thing I can say is you have to make that decision that you want to get out of the situation that you're in. That is the biggest thing, because if you don't make that decision and follow through with it completely, 100%, you will always fall back. Are you willing to go the distance? And are you able to go the distance? And if you are willing and able, then you would better be prepared to change your life completely, 100%. And that also means that you have to change uh, your friends. Um, a lot of times you're going to have to lose a lot of your family members. Like I have lost so many of my family members and it's not because I don't love them. It's just because I have moved on and I can no longer put myself in that situation that I was. And it's because of my sobriety. Mm -hmm. So you do have to let go and you can let go in a very peaceful and a very kind way. And a lot of forgiving. You have to forgive, number one, yourself is the biggest thing. And you, with forgiving yourself, it's also taking blame and responsibility because nobody is, a, is um, an innocent, you, you know, in, in any of their journey. So they do have to take part in forgiving themselves and also for owning. You have to own everything that you've done. And especially when it comes to addiction, most people are definitely blame, 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 blame. No, no. It, it, it's about you. It's about you getting your uh, crap together again, you know, and starting over at that point and then going forward from there. And like I said, you have to be willing and you have to be able and you have to be prepared because there is a lot of life changes that are going to happen. And you have to find that strength within you. And as each day goes forward and you start to shed um, what you need to shed, which is the toxicity. And like I said, the family members and your friends, you know what I mean? You just become stronger. And each day that you become stronger, your mind becomes clearer. And then you start to realize everything that is happening around you. Um, and I've, I've gone through all of that. And there is... There is so many things that I am so grateful for now um, and accepting and just letting go, just letting go and just living in the moment and just appreciating things on a daily basis. And th that that's a huge thing, you know, and then you're going to discover that you really like yourself and then you're going to discover that there are things that you will accept and what you won't accept, you know, so there's, you know, there's the good and the bad with all of it. And just being at peace. I, I could talk, I could go on and on about so many different areas. And that's, I'm, I'm actually um, going to be writing another book, uh, which is going to be going into the details of what this is of, 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 now that I've exposed, you know, what my past was. So my next book is going to be from a continuation from the end of this book up until where I am now. And yeah, so that's going to be my second book. So oh, excellent. Yeah. So and that book is is uh, is actually titled Who in the Hell Do They Think They Are? Um, Eliminating Negative Family, Friends and Circumstances to Keep My Sobriety. And that's where all of that plays in, because it, it, it is a huge journey. It's a huge journey. And you can walk away from situations and let go of situations and just still be at peace with, with it. And I don't think a lot of people understand that. They think that once they forgive, they can let these people back in their lives or they should. But you've grown for sure, but have they grown? 
And if they haven't grown, you've literally just put yourself back in the situation that you were in. So now you have an exciting event coming up. You're doing a book signing in Weyburn here on Tuesday, yeah. September 20th. Yeah. How exciting is that? So what I'm is that happening? I'm excited. Um, I'm, I think it's going to be a really great evening. Um, I'm excited to see a lot of people in Weyburn. I haven't been to Weyburn. I think it's been about a year or so. It, it, it's been quite a while. Um, and then when I do go back, I just really visit family. Um, so I'm, I'm excited to see a lot of people and I hope people will, you know what, I know people are going to show up, you know, um, I, yeah, so I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. It's, it's good. So do you know what time the book signing begins or like, it, what? so 6.30, it's from, uh, 6.30 till eight. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So I'm going to be, um, reading different areas of my book. And then after that, then I'm going to be um, talking a little bit. And then from there, I'm going to be, um, you know, doing book signing and just talking to people. And I, I will have all my books there uh, if, if you don't have one. But if you do have one, make sure to bring it and I will definitely sign it too. So yeah, it'll be a great evening. I'm looking forward to it. Yes, definitely. Okay. Anything else you would like to add, Shannon, before we... Oh, no just a lot of um exciting things coming my way um you know like i i i am going to be i i've actually was uh, notified by a uh, magazine down in miami and so i am going to be their cover uh, uh story for the october issue so that's going to be coming out and so I'll, I'll put that all over facebook um and yeah i i'm going to be starting on my second book I'm going to be doing more speaking engagements. Um, I'm going to be doing a podcast. So I'm starting a podcast in October. Um, I actually just started my brand new business here in Medicine Hat. Um, so yeah, so I'm- What I'm, business is that? What um, it's, it's called um, Fair Fighting Consulting and Inner Works. So I'm going to be doing a combination where I'm going to be facilitating and consulting people. Um, and I will work alongside my clients for six months. So they would hire me and I will help them to achieve their goals. And it's all the steps and formulas that I know work 100% um, that I have been taught through uh, Proctor Gallagher Institute, um, where I'm receiving my certification um, for that. And I don't know if anybody knows uh, Bill Proctor. And if you don't, definitely Google him. But he is the main speaker on uh, the movie The Secret, mm -hmm. uh, Law of Attraction, Law of Vibration. So I have been um, taught through Proctor Gallagher Institute, um, you know, all of his teachings. And um, it's been a very exciting journey for me. And I'm very proud that I have been taught by that institution um and yeah because it's it's just me amazing there are so many great things that are happening with me right now and and my dreams definitely are coming becoming a reality and i want people to have their goals and their dreams become a reality too so that's why i will work alongside these individuals for six months and i will get them to where they need to be yeah so would that be, would it be fair to summarize this as like a life coaching business? Is, would that be? Yeah. Yeah. You could call it a life coach. You can call it a facilitator. Um, but yeah, like I, I, I have all the material that you will need. Um, and like I said, I'm there to help guide you. And I, I'm, I'm there side by side. Uh, we do it through Zoom calls. Um, there's many different avenues and everything that I will be uh, going through the process with. And uh my website is actually at this week is going to be it's being updated right now and so everything is going to be on my website which is uh, shannonmondorauthor.com um and yeah everything will be on it um another thing that i also do within my business is i do reiki and you can either come into my office or else you can i can do reiki by zoom um, because reiki is energy work and there are no boundaries so I can, I can do you, it doesn't matter where you are in this world. Um, I, I did a gal in Switzerland and when I was done, she was like, Shannon, it was like, I was, you were standing right next to me. And I'm like, I know, 
I know. Um, so yeah, I'll also be doing uh, Reiki through Zoom or in person. So there's very different modalities that I actually do too, which a lot of people don't know. Um, so that's all going to be on my website too. So, okay. but yeah, like if you want to book a consult or anything like that, the calendar and that is all on my website and just contact me through there. Excellent. I'll make sure mm -hmm. that I get that in the article as well. Mm -hmm. That's perfect. Right. Good. Well, thank you so much for spending time with me. Now, I will send this video to you just so that you have it. And 